Can I please bring to the stage George from Rebel 360? Ryan from Data Ships and I don't know how to pronounce his name. How, how do I pronounce it? Aoife from Octane AI. Welcome, guys. Sorry, I think you thought you were on just after that, weren't you? I think our cue cards are in. Do you want to take your coat off, Aoife? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right, so we've been in acquisition. We're now in uh, retention. Well, AOV and LTV, all of these, we're trying to go into those little nitty gritty areas that all you guys talk about and present a solution that's going to help drive results in each of these areas. I don't think actually that you can, you can just be like, we're only going to do this in acquisition. It's like when we look at brands, because of the pressure they're under, they've got to be literally looking across. I see them as having to scan their whole horizon and look for kind of windows of opportunity in all sorts of different areas. So, um, Coming to you first, would you like to introduce yourself and tell everybody what you do? Yeah, so I'm George. I'm the growth marketing lead at Rebel360. My job is essentially creating retention plans for uh, brands. And at Rebel, we're basically experts in creating full service uh, retention frameworks. And we also uh, prepare businesses for growth and long term profitability as well. Great. Amazing. Ryan, you've just been up and you're back. Yeah, I'm back again. Yeah, um, back again. I, I won't actually bore you with the, the two minutes feel about who I no. am again, but um, essentially data ship. So for those who like, didn't explain it well before, our whole purpose for being is to try to get you as big as marketing this as legally possible. And Aoife, welcome. Octane AI is a tech we've put into a, a load of brands. Oh, great. Hopefully, you've got, hopefully you know it's us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell um, us what Octane does and let's see if we've got new. Do we have any Octane AI customers in the room? Okay. Yeah, there you are, you see. So Octane is a Shopify app and we are a quiz platform that allows you to add a quiz to your website and give your customers a personalized product recommendation. We also collect zero party data so you can personalize your customer's full marketing journey and we collect email and SMS opt-ins too. And it's a, what do you think you've become most well known for, the quizzes? Definitely the quizzes. We do pop-ups as well. We also have some other AI tools, but quizzes and then pop-ups would be our most popular. Great. So coming on to quizzes then and the importance of zero party data. Yes. This is something that a lot of brands don't think about, isn't it? Or don't necessarily realise. Yeah, it's definitely something that we've been pushing a lot over the years. Um, Personalisation is... Something that we think is really important, and especially when it comes to zero party data, that's information that your customers are voluntarily given to you. So you might as well use it. So with the quizzes, you basically ask your customers a few questions. They can be based to give them a recommendation or for zero party data collection. So with that, we always recommend that brands then in their marketing strategy, really personalize that journey for the customer. So if I'm taking a skincare quiz, for example, and I tell the brand that I have dry skin, I don't really want to hear about combination skin, oily skin, anything like that. So we always recommend like send them content related to that, send them blog posts, helpful information, product launches, things like that. So we really push for it, but it's something that a lot of people don't really think about in their retention strategy. And I know one thing that surprised me is actually how many customers like quizzes, right? They, this is not something that they're then, oh no, I don't want to do a quiz. Like customers are happy to go through that process. Yeah, as long as it's not too long, we definitely recommend keeping quizzes on the shorter side, keeping it fun and engaging as well. And we'll usually on the first page of a quiz recommend that you put a time frame in there. So like take our 60 second quiz, something like that. So they don't think they're gonna have to spend five minutes taking a quiz. And do you think the main, if you were to say, okay, what's gonna be the benefit of this? Is it the first party data? Or is it the personalized result? What do you think is the most beneficial for the brand? Um, Definitely both. Our quizzes convert at an average of 9%. From, so if you share a quiz with a brand new customer, that's a great rapport you're create, creating at the get-go. But obviously, the zero-party data, the opt-ins that you're collecting are really powerful as well, especially this time of year coming up to Black Friday. Um, so yeah, it, it's great for both, really. Amazing. So coming on to email marketing, I cannot believe how, I'm just going to be quite blunt and say, how many brands are so not good at their email marketing when it's not something that's new to market and it's such an area of low hanging fruit. What do you see with the brands that you, you work with in Rebel360 in terms of missed opportunities? 
Yeah, so again, going off Aoife's point, like a lot of the brands that... Just hold the mic up. I, sorry. Um, so I audit lots of like Klaviyo accounts and yeah. a lot of them really seem to miss the mark when it comes to personalizing their communications with their customers. So a lot of brands send out very generic campaigns and also they set up very basic, like non-personalized email flows. Um, so yeah, we basically use like third-party apps like Octane to collect like zero-party data, which we can, can then leverage to send out like super personalized and uh, highly targeted emails and content. Um, and like the low-hanging fruit that like we see, we think is to basically segment your customers into smaller groups um, and then just send them super personalized content. So going on the, the dry skin, like segment that group who've selected dry skin and then just send them super personalized content. Um, when we've done this for our clients, we see significant increases in engagement with open rates, click rates, and revenue. And it also makes the customers feel like super valued and understood as well. And what should a brand do if they know that in theory, but like practically don't have the resource? I mean, other than coming to Rebel 360, but like <laughs> these things are, there's a lot you can do. The segmentation could be to any degree. It could be a lot. How, are brands, how do brands resource that? And do you have an optimum sort of recommendation as to what's the minimum they should do as a base level? Um, well, you can obviously, you know, do personalize with your first name, but that's just scratching the surface for us. So what we, I mean, Clavio have an amazing platform to like really train people. So like if you just go through the academy, you can learn how to segment properly. So yeah, um, yeah we, we'd recommend that. And apart from coming to us as a agency. <laughs> and Ryan, what I think is amazing is this is just a focus on, I mean, I can't, sometimes I can't believe how much focus there is on such a small area. We're just talking really here about post-purchase email marketing, getting first party data. This is a hell of a lot of things for brands to consider, okay? Quizzes, segmentation, getting their email marketing rates up. Is it worth it? Yeah, I think it definitely is. I think I'll, I'll echo what, what both George and Eva are saying. Like, it, it really is all about first party data. Um, like, there was a, you know, cataclysmic event that happened about two or three years ago when Apple started asking everyone to track on their... Like, do, do they want to get people permission to track in their apps? That actually changed the accuracy of cookies and all these activities. And, and the knock-on impact of that is now the first-party data is really, really valuable to brands. So I guess, really, it's an asset that a lot of e-commerce stores have that they're not maximizing. So like for every single person that's buying from you, you really want to try to capture as much data, but also consent to use that data as possible. And then, I guess, maximize the returns from it rather than constantly having to go out to other platforms like Facebook and Instagram to, to acquire new customers. Brilliant. And Aoife, just before we wrap up, can you share some success stories? Yeah. So Jones Row Beauty are one of my clients. Uh, they're actually Bobby Brown's new makeup brand. So... An issue that a lot of makeup brands have selling online is usually helping people find their shade. So we actually have five, five maybe more quizzes with them, all shade finders. But something we launched a foundation shade finder a few years ago. But because they had all that information on their customers, when we launched their concealer, they were able to send all of their customers their shade recommendation directly, which is great. And we're going to do that again next month for a new product. Um, along with that, they also created their loyalty program with a quiz. So they sent out a Octane quiz to their VIP customers, so someone who had purchased three times, and basically asked them what type of loyalty program they would like to see, and they built that program around that. So we've had clients like figure out trends from their quizzes, pain points, create new product lines, things like that. So there's a lot that you can do with it, really. Okay, amazing. Well, all these guys are also going to be around, so grab them to talk about all these areas. And thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.